Okay. Okay, now. Um, today we're going to um, do questions, right? So we were solving these questions of uh, chapter four. Remember, we were on hun page 117. Page 117, and we were doing these questions. This was the last question that we solved, question number five. So we're going to continue with question number six. Let me see if there's, okay. Okay, so let's read this real quick. You can uh, read this on your book, uh, page 117. Okay, the diagram shows the apparatus used to electrolyze concentrated aqueous sodium chloride. Give a description of this electrolysis. In your description include what substance the electrodes are made from and the reason for using this substance. So you're going to explain everything, how one rod is connected to the positive terminal of the battery, the other to the negative terminals, and so one is negatively charged, the other is relatively positively charged, and so you know how cations and anions will be attracted towards the oppositely charged electrode, right? I hope you can do that on your own. Now, uh, what material should the electrodes be made of? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Choose the chat window. Yes, graphite, graphite. And we know why, because it is unreactive and it is uh, yeah, cheap and it is easily available and it is unreactive. And though it is unreactive, it is still conducts electricity because we also want electricity to be conducted, right? So it is unreactive and at the same time, it is conducting electricity, right? What you would observe during the electrolysis? Now that would depend upon what is being discharged at each electrode. So these are the cations and these are our anions, right? Hydrogen ions and hydroxide ion from the water and sodium and chloride from the sodium chloride. Now the concentration of chloride is high because this is concentrated. Now, of course, sodium is high up in the reactivity series. Sodium is never going to be discharged. It's going to be hydrogen, right? And also pay attention to the wording of the question they're asking, observe, what did you observe? Observe meaning, what can you see? What did you see? Right, no, what did you see? I mean, of course, the gas bubbles did not have hydrogen labeled on it, on them, right? What did you see? You will just see, you will just say that you saw bubbles, effervescence, bubbles being formed. Yes, gas bubbles, and you can say that uh you know if you really want to you know pinpoint what type of gas it is then you can say that it gave a pop sound with a lighted splinter that's because that's an identification test for hydrogen right okay what about the other electrode what will you see in the uh, in the other electrode hydroxide or chloride chlorine chlor chlorine will be discharged why because the concentration of chloride is high by the way, if the concentration, if this was dilute, how would that have changed? If it was dilute, if this concentration, if this solution was dilute, then what would be discharged at the anode? Right, Fatima. Yes, oxygen would be uh, released, right? Yes. The names of the substances, and then what would you observe? Uh, what would you observe for the chlorine gas? It, this is page number 117. We are doing questions of the end of chapter. Yes, 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 yellow-green gas. Chlorine exists in the form of gas. Now you should know what, e what of these most commonly used elements exist as at room temperature, right? So we know that hydrogen exists as a gas and we know that chlorine exists as a a yellow green gas and hydrogen is a colorless gas. The names of the substances produced at each electrode, you can just say chlorine at anode and hydrogen at the cathode, simple. Let's move on, question number seven. Okay, this is, this question has a big story written on it. Okay, sometimes, you know, to scare you, they give really big stories, but the questions at the end are so simple. But anyway, 
Okay, until recently, arsenic poisoning, either deliberate or accidental, has been a frequent cause of death. The symptoms of arsenic poisoning are identical with those of a common illness, cholera. A reliable test was needed to prove the presence of arsenic in a body. In 1840, Marsh devised a reliable test for arsenic. Now, in this apparatus, we can see that in the test tube, they have pieces of zinc along with arsenic compound. Okay, this is compound, some compound. So arsenic, where does arsenic lie in the periodic table? In which group is arsenic in the periodic table? Periodic table, arsenic is in group five. This is arsenic in group five, the same group as nitrogen and phosphorus. So group five. Okay, group five have five electrons in their outermost shell and they usually form three bonds. Remember like ammonia. So even if you know one atom from each group, from that group, that means you know all the elements in that group, sort of, right? So you know nitrogen, nitrogen, even though you might not know arsenic that much, but you know nitrogen, right? You have heard of nitrogen and you know that nitrogen forms a very common popular compound ammonia with high, with um, nitrogen. Uh, so this is ammonia, NH3. So arsenic is nitrogen's brother. will do sort of same thing, okay? Elements in the same group are like brothers, okay? So arsenic will also bond this way, okay? So some compound, we don't know, but some compound, okay? Pieces of zinc. And then we are adding hydrochloric acid. We are adding hydrochloric acid into it. And then, okay, hydrogen is formed in this reaction and any arsenic compound reacts with this hydrogen to form arsine, which is arsenic hydride. So can you see this is like ammonia form? NH3, ASH3 looks like that, right? The mixture of hydrogen and arsine is burned at the jet and arsenic forms as a black stain on the glass. Write an equation for the reaction that forms hydrogen. Okay, now this is easy. You know why? Because yes, there is zinc. You added hydrochloric acid into it and zinc is more reactive than hydrogen, so it replaces it. Let me write it down for those who do not have the answers. I know you guys have answers from the, okay, this and then this, and then this. Hydrogen gas, we know hydrogen exists as a diatomic molecule, right? So two hydrogen, two chloride, right? Okay, solid, aqueous. All chlorides are soluble except for silver and lead. So this will be soluble, this will be gas. Okay, in the 19th century, a bright green pigment, copper to arsenate, Five was used to kill rats and insects. In damp conditions, microorganisms can act on this compound to produce the very poisonous gas arsine. Suggest a reason why it is necessary to include the oxidation states in the name of the compound. Now, can you notice that, you know, they're telling us stories, poison and insects and rats. And at the end, look at the question they're asking. Why is it necessary to include the oxidation state in the? So, you know, these stories are to scare you. You know, like they're gonna ask something really complicated, difficult. I don't know, it's about some poison, but that's not the case, okay? So just, just so don't get scared. Yes, very good job, Ajwa, because some elements have more than one oxidation state. Remember I told you, and this is usually with transition metals, because transition metals in this periodic table, transition metals are the ones which have more than one oxidation states, right? So they are the ones, so like you have, if you have, two mariams in your class, okay? Which mariam are you talking about, okay? Mariam Omar or Mariam Salim or whatever. So you use the last name, right? To differentiate between the two mariams. So in the same way, when you have, for example, iron, which iron are you talking about? Iron one, iron two, or iron three, right? Chromium three, chromium two, chromium six, chromium seven. There are so many chromiums. Right, so that is why we have to include the oxidation state in the compound. So since, mm, yeah, even arsenic, 
they have mentioned oxidation state of arsenic. So maybe arsenic, though is it is in fifth group, seems like it has more than one oxidation state. So that's why they have mentioned it. Okay, the formula for the arsenate ion is this. ASO43 minus. Complete the ionic equation for the formation of copper 2 arsenate 5. Okay, how do we get this answer? How do we get this answer? So this is how they have written the question, right? Copper 2 plus, then dash, then arsenate, and then, okay. Let's figure this out. Now we know there's two plus and there's three minus. Okay, and we know that an equation should be uh, electrically balanced, right? It should be electrically balanced. Uh, two threes are six, three twos are six, right? Can we do that? Two threes are six, three twos are six. So I will get six plus here and minus six here and that will be electrically neutral. So let's do this, two and then three. So now I have six plus and minus six, so I'm electrically neutral. I mean, my, my reaction is electrically neutral. Now, the compounds that they will form, I will just write down the ions first. Now, I know that this is minus three. I know that this is minus three, and this is plus two. So plus two would go here, plus two would go here. Remember, the oxidation state of the metal should be written as a subscript on the right lower side of the anion two, and the charge on the anion will be written right lower side of the cation. So this would be this, okay? Yeah, but don't just copy the answers. Can you do this without looking at the answers at the back? Ask yourself that. If you can, then only you have achieved something. Otherwise, I mean, otherwise, you know, if anybody can do it. Yes, okay, good job, Hala. Okay, so with this, we have come to the end of this chapter from this book at least, okay? But we will keep, Revising, of course. Okay, now I want to uh, discuss polar molecules. Okay, real quick. Now, what do, what do I mean by polar molecules? Now, what do I mean by the polarity? Now, remember in charged electrostatic charges, when you did in physics, we saw something, we saw some pictures like this, right? Now, if for example, if, for example, these are four pictures, okay? Look at this picture. Here, the charges, positive charges, are in the number of positive charges is equal to the number of negative charges, right? So they cancel each other out. So overall, this molecule is neutral. This particle has only positive charge. So this is a positively charged particle, which in chemistry is called an ion. This has only negative charge. So overall, this is a negatively charged uh, particles. So this is an anion. Now this is overall neutral because again the number of negative charge is equal to the number of positive charge, but it is polarized, meaning that the charges are separate. The two ends of the molecule have separate charges, negative charge on this side and the positive charge on this side. So there is separation of charge. So this is called polarized, right? Now let's look at some molecules, some examples of molecules. For example, I have this hydrogen fluoride, or I could even take hydrogen chloride. You know, hydrogen chloride is more common, but yeah, the same thing. Now, in order to decide if a bond is polar or not, you have to know the electronegativities of the two atoms involved. Here we have fluorine and hydrogen, right? Now, fluorine is a halogen. It is way here on the right side of the periodic table. And we know that they, these elements are electronegative, right? Hydrogen is here. Hydrogen is here. And hydrogen, you know, sometimes is also included in group one. So hydrogen does not have as much electronegativity as 
fluorine or even chlorine. So definitely, fluorine is going to pull the electron cloud more towards itself. This arrow, by the way, will be pointing towards the negative charge, okay? This is a vector, okay? A little of physics here. Now, the reason why I'm discussing this polar molecules is this concept is really essential to remove your confusions in all the three subjects, biology, physics, chemistry, okay? Until and unless you don't understand which molecules are polar and nonpolar, science stays, con stays a confusion for, for a student. So just a few minutes, five to 10 minutes, and this will be done. So uh, this electronegative element is pulling the electron more towards itself. This is a vector. Treat this as a vector, okay? the direction will be towards the electron, towards the negative charge, where the negative charge is going. So the, the arrow would be pointing on the, towards the right side because fluorine is pulling the electron towards itself, right? So if you have a net dipole moment, this is called a dipole moment, this is called a dipole moment. If you have a net dipole moment, meaning nothing is canceling it out, and this is not neutral, you have a moment, then that means you have a polar molecule. You have a polar, mo you have a polar mo molecule. In polar molecule, you have unequal sharing of electrons. Remember this, in polar molecules, you have unequal sharing of electrons. In non-polar molecules, you have equal sharing of electrons, equal sharing of electrons. Now, when when does that happen? When do you have equal sharing of electrons? For example, in diatomic molecules, when the, both the atoms are same, so of course they will have the same affinity, same electronegativity, and therefore they are going to pull the electron equally. Okay, so the overall the molecule is going to be neutral. Okay, no separation of charges. Equal pulling of electrons. So all these diatomic molecules. It helps to remember them that these are the diatomic molecules. These are all halogens, okay, the group seven, and this is nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen, right? The other group of nonpolar molecules is hydrocarbons, provided there is no oxygen or nitrogen or other elements. If they are added, if you add, like in glucose, you have oxygen. Now, glucose is a hydrocarbon, but it has oxygen. And that makes it polar. That makes it polar so much that it dissolves in water without any problem, right? Okay, so these are hydrocarbons. Now, I, I have not explained hydrocarbons yet. Now, in hydrocarbons, you will look at the hydro... First of all, for example, let's talk about methane. Methane is this, right? CH4 right? We have CH4. Now, before you decide on whether this molecule is polar or not, look at the bond. The bond is CH, which is more electronegative and which is less electronegative. Carbon is more electronegative, but, but the difference in their electronegativities is not that much. It is not enough to make this bond polar. So basically, this bond is non-polar. So for that, you have to have a little idea on which uh, element is more electronegative and which is less, and if the electronegativity difference is enough, okay? So here in this case, carbon and hydrogen electronegativity difference is not that much, meaning they are equally electronegative. So there is like sort of equal sharing of electrons between carbon and hydrogen, which makes this carbon-hydrogen bond nonpolar and therefore the whole molecule is nonpolar. So no matter how big the molecule you might have, all of them are going to be nonpolar. And that's why they are oil. For example, oil is hydrocarbon. They do not dissolve in water because they are nonpolar. Nonpolar molecules because water, now let's talk about water as well. Nonpolar molecules do not dissolve in water, right? Carbon hydrogen bond is nonpolar. The electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen is too low. Okay, so here is the list 
non-polar molecules, equal sharing of electrons, diatomic molecules, hydrocarbons, and then let's talk about compounds. When you have compounds, I'm just telling you about the most common molecules that you come across in, in chemistry and biology, okay? For example, uh, let's talk about this. Now, this molecule is not that common, but just to make things easier for you to understand. Now, for example, CF4, okay, CF4. Before we decide on whether CF4 is polar or not, look at its shape. By the way, it is helpful to know the shapes of molecules, you know, like, like how you know the shape of water molecule. It's like a bent B, right? It's bent, okay? Carbon dioxide is linear, okay? Sulfur dioxide is also bent. These common molecules, it helps to know their shapes, okay? It helps, okay? So CF4, now usually when carbon is bonded to four atoms, remember, when carbon is bonded to four atoms, it takes the shape of a tetrahedron. Okay, tetrahedron, you know what a tetrahedron is? A tetrahedron. So CF4. By the way, methane is also of the same shape. Yeah, tetrahedron is, uh, how should I explain you? I should have taken a picture. Okay, uh, okay, I'll show you the picture, okay? but just. For now, just understand, and okay, any molecule with carbon at the center and with four other elements bonded to it are always in a tetrahedron shape. Remember that tetrahedron, I'll show you what tetrahedron looks like. Even methane is the same. Even methane is the same. Yeah, like sort of triangular pyramid sort of. Yes, yes, Ajwa, thank you. Jazakallah khairan, yes. It's like a triangular pyramid. Yes, that's a tetrahedron. So again, now fluorine is highly electronegative. Now let's talk about the CF bond first. Fluorine is highly negative, electronegative as compared to carbon. So fluorine is going to pull the electrons more towards itself. And so there will be a dipole moment pointing towards fluorine. So now here's a dipole moment. Here's a dipole moment. Here's a dipole moment. And here is a dipole moment. Right, now all of them are going to cancel each other out. If you look at it, 3D shape, they will all cancel each other out. So overall, though the bond is polar, overall the molecule is non-polar, okay? This was just one example. If you did not understand this, it's okay. I, bear with me, uh, listen to more examples and then maybe you will understand. And at the end, if you still did not understand, I will repeat, okay? For example, this is carbon dioxide, right? This is carbon dioxide. This is one straight molecule, linear molecule in one line, right? Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So oxygen is gonna pull the electrons towards itself, okay? So oxygen will have a partial negative charge. Carbon will have a partial positive charge. Again, here, oxygen will have a partial negative charge because partial meaning like not complete. Electronegativity is the ability to pull the electrons towards itself. Electronegativity is the affinity, is the attraction for electrons. When I say something is more electronegative, meaning it has more attra attraction for the electron, right? So oxygen has greater attraction for electrons, okay? So oxygen will pull the electrons towards itself. Hala, bear with me, listen to these examples. Maybe you will understand, okay? Now, as oxygen is pulling the electrons towards itself, the sharing of electrons is unequal. Unequal meaning there is negative here and then there is positive here, okay? Yeah, this is not in the book. Nabil, this is not in the book, okay? Yeah, but it is important for you to understand so many things. I, I, I will tell you why it is important. I'll tell you. Now, these two will cancel each other out. These two will cancel each other out. And so you will have a non 
polar molecule. Sulfur dioxide. Okay, leave sulfur dioxide if you guys are getting so much confused. This is water molecule. Let's talk about water molecule because this is important. Now you can see that it is bent shaped, right? It's bent shaped and oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, right? So the bond is polar with oxygen pulling the electron more towards itself, right? So this is a polar bond, right? So the dipole moment would be this way. Now let me uh, draw this water molecule. And so oxygen will be pulling the electrons towards itself, right? Now this has two components. If you do not understand, it's okay. I This is my last, okay? Uh, this has two moments, vertical and horizontal. Remember the addition of forces in physics? Addition of forces in physics, do you remember? These two moments will cancel each other out. So you have a net dipole moment of water with the moment pointing towards oxygen. Okay, so that makes this water molecule a polar molecule. Water molecule is polar. Okay, same goes for sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is also a polar molecule. That's all I wanted to say about polar molecule. Now let me see your questions. Okay. Hala, electronegative means uh, attraction towards the electrons. Okay, electronegative means attraction towards the electrons. Okay. Uh, uh, hydrogen will pull the oxygen right. Oxygen will pull the electron towards itself. Okay. A tetra, a neutron is a stable cluster of four neutrons, but it's not supported by nuclear forces. Oh my God. I'm talking about, okay. Tetrahedron, forget it. If you're not understanding it, just, just forget it. This is what I meant. Tetrahedron, that's a shape. Okay, let me pull out uh, a picture of tetrahedron and I'll share my screen with you. Uh, okay, wait. Actually, the thing is, you guys, uh, you know, okay, let me pull this out. Yeah, this is what a tetrahedron looks like. This is a tetrahedron. Can you see a triangular pyramid sort of? Did you get my point? Can you see? Yeah, this is a molecular structure. Okay, uh, okay, let me show you CF4, the molecule that I was talking about. This, this is the triangular pyramid. I was talking about, this is CF4. This is CF4, can you see? So yeah, so basically you have to understand there's no hi-fi, there's nothing difficult to understand here. Trust me, what I'm saying is that it, what do you, what do you understand when I say a polar molecule? Sometimes, you know, it's confusing, right? So I wanted to clarify this in a, be, in a better way that, um, Okay. Yeah. If, if you did not understand polarity, this is what I mean by polarity. How are the charges separated in a molecule? Why is it that water molecule is polar? What do we mean when we say that water mo molecule is polar? What do we mean when we say that hydrocarbons are non-polar and that they do not dissolve in water? And then glucose all of a sudden is polar though glucose is also hydrocarbon, right? These are all confusions and questions, right? So that is why I found this very helpful. And so that, that's why I shared with you guys. But if you cannot understand, if you cannot understand, don't confuse yourself. It's okay. There is no difference, Shamim, there's no difference between a tetrahedron and pyramid. 
uh, tetrahedron is like sort of a pyramid. Same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay, there is no difference. Is there any other question? Uh, where are these polars in book? These polars are not in the book. I don't understand electronegative. How do we get to know what is more electronegative? Yes, that's a good question. I like that question. Yeah, electronegative, basically, overall, you have to know which element is more electronegative than the other. But a general idea is that the elements on the right hand side of the periodic table, I'm not talking about the noble gases. I'm not apart from the noble gases. I'm not talking about the noble gases. But other than that, the, the elements on the right side of periodic table will be more electronegative compared to the ones on the left side. Because remember, they lose electrons. That's because they do not have any attraction for the electrons. They don't want any electrons. These elements, on the other hand, they want to gain electron to get a stability, right? Remember? So same thing. So elements on the right side have greater affinity for electrons. How will this help us in chemistry? Uh, uh. You will find out, okay, as we will progress. I all the time talk about polarity, 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 right? So, okay. Let's, uh, did you guys do this worksheet? Did you guys? Uh, yes, you have, okay. Uh, uh, what are you saying? Can you repeat nonpolar? Peter, you can listen. Uh, see, uh, nonpolar means like there is no dipole moment. So I gave you this. I shared this table with you. Here, nonpolar molecules is when the electron sharing is equal. For example, diatomic molecules, when the, both the atoms are the same element, right? And then we have hydrocarbons. And then, jazakallahu khairan amana. It is really relieving to know that it was easy for you to understand. For other compounds, check bonds and check geometry. If this helped even one person, I will be more than happy that, you know, somebody got helped. Okay. Okay. Um, so, do you guys want me to do this worksheet? Uh, or you don't want me to do this worksheet. Okay, Hiba, can you please answer the first question for me? An example of a redox reaction is shown. Okay, this is easy. Question number two. Which reagent is used to test oxidizing agent? Why? Hiba? Can I unmute you? You want to, or will you use the chat window? I want to know why. Oh, Amna, you were talking about the worksheet. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> teacher told? Is that the reason why answer B is correct? Because the teacher told. <laughs> Come on. Who's going to explain me? Question number two. Which reagent is used to test, test oxidizing agent? Who wants to explain this? Who wants to explain this? Because a color change is produced? Oil rig? No miss because chemistry says that answer should be B. Are you guys kidding? Kidding me? Uh, 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 uh. Okay, Hiba, I'm, 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 I'm unmuting you. I want to know if you know this. If you don't mind. If you don't want me to unmute you, you just say it right now. Okay, forget it. Uh, forget the uh, polar and non-polar. Uh, zinc causes... <laughs> don't unmute. Why? Zinc causes copper to lose electrons. Uh, Saad Aslam, I'm talking about question number two. Yeah, I'm talking about question number two. Which reagent is used to test oxidizing agent? No, that's okay. That's okay. That's fine. You see, you guys are giving me correct answers just because maybe you have the answer key to this worksheet, but, are, but do you know the reason? Who, who 
volunteers to explain who who wants to yosara you you want to d is the answer because reduction is is oxi iodide is oxidized to iodine the color of the solution will change from colorless to yellow brown no i mean yes you are right but that's not how i want you to explain yes aisha zahid you want to try okay okay aisha um ma'am if we're using potassium iodide because if there will be uh, if there will be any oxidation a color change will be there iodide ion which is i negative negative 1 will be then oxidized to i2 so that will know that uh, then we will know that there's an oxidation as there is as the i2 is being oxidized okay let me tell you something if the color change is the only reason why you're circling b then let me tell you a also changes color and dichromate also changes color okay if that's the reason you are because of the color change then by the way these also color change a and c okay now listen to my explanation okay and see if it is making sense okay now which reagent is used to test oxidizing agent right what will you react with oxidizing agent what will you react with oxidizing agent remember this a and b right this is giving an electron to this and so this is getting reduced and this is getting oxidized and so this is a reducing agent and this is an oxidizing agent so can you see that for oxidizing agent we need a reducing agent for an oxidizing agent we need a reducing agent okay all three will give you color change in redox reactions all three will give you in fact their color changes are even more prominent than this they they this turns from purple to colorless this gives you a uh, yellow to orange they are even brighter co colors so you don't say color change okay you you want to say that if if i want to test an oxidizing agent i need a reducing agent and these two are oxidizing agent as you can see oxygen in them we i cannot have two oxidizing agents one has to be a reducing agent and potassium iodide is that reducing agent i wanted this explanation i wanted you to tell me the relationship between oxidizing agent and reducing agent that was what i was looking for not just the color change okay amna that's easy to say that i knew that but you didn't say it okay amna you will do question number um let me see what question will you do wait 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 question number 7 come on amna do question number 7 for me yes can i unmute you if you don't want me to unmute you yeah okay fine i don't i don't want to unmute anybody who does not want to be unmuted i i respect that but just answer me in the chat window question number 7 what is observed when potassium manganate by the way this is manganate not manganite this is a printing mistake what is observed when potassium and this should be when when potassium manganate solution is reduced by a reducing agent and i also want the ionic equation okay amana if, if if the teacher told you tell me b purple two colorless why why amna i need i need you to answer me completely why why from purple to colorless tell me the equation show me the equation okay 
okay now when i give you the answer then don't say that i know it okay don't say that you're not allowed and when i'm explaining because you guys are not giving me satisfactory answer i don't want to read in the chat window that i have we have done this with the teacher and that i know the answer <clears throat> okay okay let me just do it okay even even though you might know it but let me do it because you know we're we're running out of uh, or maybe i shouldn't do this worksheet okay just leave the worksheet let's just move on uh, okay okay i got these a uh, few questions leave the worksheet okay because if you guys don't want me to do it it's okay okay let let's move on to uh, to these questions i got this book okay so let's try out these questions and i will share my screen with you i have questions saved okay uh, okay okay let me see here okay this question iodine is extracted from seaweed using acidified hydrogen peroxide in a redox reaction the ionic equation for the reaction is this okay in which oxidation state is the iodine in seaweed ab bolo ab answer ki to nahi hai na come on okay let's see No, no, no. It's okay. No need to be sorry. It's okay. It's okay. See, I think you guys think you know it, but you don't know it actually. You just because you know the correct answer, you have this feeling that you know it, but you don't. If I ask you the reason why that is that answer is correct, you don't give me the correct reasoning. So that makes me feel that you know. But it's okay. Uh, it's okay. We will learn the same same way. So. Um, uh wait where was i so yeah in which oxidation state is the iodine in seaweed you guys are saying zero did i see zero are you guys saying zero no it's minus 1 yes ariba you are correct it's minus 1 seaweed is this seaweed is this minus 1 see iodine is extracted from seaweed iodine is where the oxidation state is zero okay there is a color change in this reaction why there is a color change in this reaction why yes 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 usman it's minus 1 yes minus 1 now give me the reason for the color change okay what is the color come on come on come on iodine in solution gives what color purple no iodine gives yellow brown solution yes yellow brown solution good job colorless is iodide amna iodide minus 1 is colorless so yes in the equation when you started uh when you started iodide is in the colorless solution but then it got oxidized to iodine okay is the iodide ion oxidized or reduced so from colorless the color change is from colorless to yellow brown now write the half equation for this change and is the iodide ion oxidized or reduced first of all uh yes it is oxidized from minus 1 to 0 good job and who's going to write the half equation who's going to do the half equation for me just to cut the equation in half wow can you open the questions 
two iodide very good job uh, what two iodide gained two electrons to give iodine no two iodide iodine and then lost two electrons yes ajwa and ariba you both are correct yes it will be this way yes iodide i i will it's like this okay why because we know it 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 exists as diatomic okay in solution it dissolves a little bit and then this is also aqueous two minus here two minus here so this is electrically balanced and also chemically right okay move on in hydrogen peroxide in hydrogen peroxide the oxidation state of hydrogen is plus 1 remember this in hydrogen peroxide the oxidation state of hydrogen is plus 1 what is the oxidation state of oxygen in hydrogen peroxide so hydrogen peroxide if this is plus 1 so we have two of this plus 1 multiplied by 2 plus 2 what would give me 0 so 2 plus 2x is no sorry this is not how you should do this okay so plus 1 multiplied by 2 would give me plus 2 so i should have minus 2 here right to have total of overall 0 minus 2 is divided in two atoms so i should get minus 1 so yeah oxygen is minus 1 what was the question this was the question what is the oxidation state of oxygen in hydrogen peroxide Yes, in hydrogen peroxide, the oxidation state of oxygen is minus one. How does the oxidation state of oxygen change during the reaction? Now, here in hydrogen peroxide, in hydrogen peroxide, it is minus one, and here it on water it is. I'm not sharing screen. i'm not sharing screen i'm showing video and this is minus 2 okay this is minus 1 in hydrogen peroxide and in water it's minus 2 so what do you think is happening to oxygen how does the oxidation state of oxygen change during the reaction is there any is there reflection so from Minus one to minus two. Yes, it is getting reduced. Yes, it is getting reduced. So since iodide, iodine is getting oxidized, but oxygen is getting reduced. Right. Now, copy and complete this half equation for hydrogen peroxide. So this is the half equation. That was the half equation for iodine. This is the half equation for hydrogen peroxide. So, how will we complete this? you cannot see i'm trying my best yes okay don't 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 zoom in hydrogen peroxide plus two hydrogen will give now you can try this on your own as well okay and then let me know if you got the answer so this is this is minus 1 here and minus 2 here so this is reduction we all know that and reduction is gain of electrons right now you see that there are two plus here plus 2 and this is zero here so i should add two electrons here yes so i should add two electrons here for this to be electrically neutral so overall i have zero here now zero and zero so two electrons okay let's move on now the oxidation states in a formula add up to zero give the oxidation state of the underlined atom in each formula below aluminum oxide what's the yes it's plus 3 good job ammonia good job in ammonia what's the oxidation state of nitrogen ammonia yes hala good job nitrogen is plus 3 Okay, in carbonic acid, what about carbon? 
Carbon is plus four. Good job. Okay. Phosphorus trichloride. What's the oxidation state of phosphorus? Plus three. Good job. Copper one chloride. Copper one chloride. Well, by the way, they have already mentioned the oxidation state in the in the brackets. Yeah, in 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 the parentheses. So copper two chloride is the oxidation state is two. Now comment on the compounds in five and six. Five and six. What can you say about them? They are the same compound with the same elements, but copper has different oxidation states in the two compounds, and therefore uh, the two compounds have different color. The colors will be different because the transition metals change their color with their oxidation states. So in compound one, copper oxidation state is plus one. In compound six, the oxida oxidation state of copper is plus two. Right, let's move on to question number eight. The oxidizing agent potassium manganate, and then again in parentheses seven, is the oxidation state of manganese, can be used to analyze the percentage of iron two present in iron tablets. Below is an ionic equation showing the ions that take part in the reaction. What does the hydrogen ion in the equation tell you about this reaction? Good job, Ariba. Yes, that this reaction is taking place in an acidic solution, right? This reaction is taking place in an acidic solution. Describe the color change. Yes, describe the color change from purple to colorless. Good job. Yes, good job. Good. Which is the reducing reagent in this reaction? What is the reducing reagent in this reaction? Now, let me write this down real quick. Okay. Hydrogen ion. Okay, plus. Okay. Now, now look at this. Here, the oxidation state of manganese is, what is the oxidation state of manganese here? Minus eight plus seven. So this should be plus seven. Here it's plus two, right? So from plus seven to plus two, that means this is reduction. Okay, this is plus two. And can you see hydrogen ion is the same? It's plus one here and plus one here. So nothing happened to hydrogen. Nothing happened to oxygen. It's minus two, minus two here. So nothing happened to hydrogen or oxygen. But iron, here it's two plus and here it's three plus. So this is oxidation, right. So now tell me what is the reducing agent? Yes, the one that got oxidized is the reducing agent. So yes, iron is the reducing agent, good job. Now, how could you tell when all the iron two had reacted? Write the half equation for the iron two ions. Let's do this part E and I will talk about part D. If you don't want to do part D, it's okay because, okay, iron two ions. Color change, color change, what color change? Aadha answer dekar or bus. Pura answer to diya karo na. Okay, this is oxidation, right? So now, how will I complete this, balance this equation? Two plus here, three plus here. This is oxidation. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. So yeah, one electron here, okay? One electron here. So, yes. This is how half reaction write the half equation for the or you know and they have write written five so i can also write five five two is a ten five three is a fifteen and this is ten this is fifteen so i should add five electrons here five 
now this is electrically and chemically balanced right okay now how could you tell when all the iron 2 had reacted okay i'll try to explain you if you understand fine if you don't understand we'll just move on um basically you see this is purple in color and this is colorless okay iron 3 plus does give you a brown solution but this is like sort of titration so we keep the concentration very low so concentration is low and so this is almost almost colorless so when you see the change in color from this is dark purple by the way this is also slightly colored but its color is pale compared to this dark purple so you will this color will predominate of purple so from purple to colorless and then how will you confirm if all the iron 2 plus ions have reacted you will add a few more drops like with the help of a burette one drop or two drops of this purple colored manganate and you will see that purple color will persist it will not give you colorless meaning no more iron 2 plus available to react with this purple so when you add one or two drops of manganate and it does not change and it does not turn colorless that's when you know that all the iron 2 plus ions have reacted that's it okay now question number 9 potassium chromate 6 is yellow in acid it forms orange potassium dichromate 6 no colorless not transparent no you will use the word colorless okay in acid it forms orange potassium dichromate 6 these are the ions that give those colors right dichromate CrO4 2 minus and Cr2O7 2 minus. What is the oxidation state of chromium in both the compounds, yellow and orange? Let me write it down here because the book is reflecting a lot of light. Okay, when I add acid. Okay, so this is yellow. And this is orange. Okay. What is the oxidation state of chromium in this? Net charge is 2 minus. Oxygen is minus 2. Minus 2 multiplied by 4. So minus 2 multiplied by 4 will give us minus 8. If I want to have minus 2, this should be plus 6. So chromium is plus 6 no not minus yeah chromium is plus six what about chromium here what is the oxidation state of chromium here now seven oxygen there are seven oxygen atoms right and overall charge on this polyatomic ion is two minus so minus two multiplied by seven is minus 14. now i want the total thing to add up to minus two right because that's the net charge on it so 10 oh uh, no sorry 12 but 12 is divided into two atoms. So per atom, per atom would give me six. So plus six here as well, right? So plus six, plus six, right? But can you see the color is a little different, yellow and then orange because of the acid. The reaction of chromium ions is not a redox reaction. Explain why. You did not understand? Who did not understand? Abdullah. Yes. Yes, Osman. Yellow one is plus six. Orange is plus six. Okay, Abdullah, what did you not understand? See. Okay, I'll try to explain you. I'll try to explain you. See, there is nothing in this. They have just given us two ions. Okay chromate and dichromate these are their formula they have even given the formula in the question they're just asking us to calculate the oxidation state of chromium in both the ions right so we did the calculation abdullah do you understand the calculation or do you want me to explain abdullah do you understand the calculation of oxidation states explain okay Okay, okay, good. Okay, then I will explain you. How do I get 
the oxidation state of chromium in this chromate okay now we will to for, in order to find out something unknown you have to start from what you already know right we already know the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 2 remember i also shared the rules of oxidation states this i have shared in the group many times okay oxygen is usually minus 2 except for hydrogen peroxide in which the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 1 okay remember this so here this is chromate ion so the oxidation state of oxygen will be minus 2 right now there are four of them and then the whole ion has a charge of minus 2 on it so whatever the oxidation state of chromium is okay uh, and whatever the oxidation state of oxygen is when i add them up i should get minus 2 okay now minus 2 but there are minus 2 per atom now there are four oxygen atoms in here so minus 2 into 4 will give me minus 8 and i have total should be minus 2 so let me keep this x right for example this is x x and then x minus 8 is should give me minus 2 right so x would be minus 2 plus 8 and that would be 6 so chromium's oxidation state is 6 Abdullah, did you understand? Did you understand, Abdullah? No? Okay, good, good. Okay, let's move on. Uh, okay, these, this book questions are done. Okay, let's do, see in the question, it's already written chromate six. Yes, yes, they have already mentioned it, but you have to, uh, you have to calculate and you have to prove that it's plus six. Okay, and then the last part of the question was, why isn't it this a, re a redox reaction? Sorry. Yeah, because there is no change in the oxidation state. Good job. Because oxidation state did not change, so therefore, this is not a redox reaction. Okay. A little more questions, a, a few more questions. Yes, I know we are out of time. Uh, just a few more questions. I know you guys don't like teachers who take a few extra minutes. I know that my daughter is the same way. But a few more questions. Okay, because we don't get chance of doing questions too often. Uh, okay, these. Okay, which equation does not represent a redox reaction? Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Which equation does not represent a redox reaction? Now, A, barium aqueous sulfate aqueous is giving barium sulfate solid. Bar bromine, uh, option B, bromine gas, iodide aqueous, bromide aqueous, iodine solid. C option, chlorine gas, sulfide aqueous, sulfur solid, and chloride aqueous. D option, copper two plus, zinc solid, copper solid, zinc aqueous. Yes, let's see. Amina A. Miss, please increase the class time. I can increase the class time 24. What do you mean 24? Yeah, A is the correct option. A is the correct option. Where did this? Yes, A is the correct option because in A, you can see that they have just written. Um, where is it? Yes, they have just written the ions in the aqueous form on the left hand side and in the solid form. But even on in the solid form, the ions are still ions. Right, it's just that they have made a precipitate. So only the change of a state, the charges are the same. Oxidation state on the ions are the same. There's only change in state, okay? Next question. Which changes is an example of oxidation? Chloride ions to chlorine atoms? 
uh, copper two ions to copper atoms. Iron three ions to iron two ions, oxygen atoms to oxide ions. Oxidation. Yes. Okay. Uh, D, D, D. I cannot understand. Uh, it, the correct answer is A. A. Because you see chloride is from minus 1 to 0. If you find this difficult to understand, you can write it down this way. You can write it down this way. See, uh, this is so difficult to, you know. So chloride atoms, chloride ions. Did you find this question here? I don't know where I got this question from. I can't find it. Huh? Chloride and then copper. Two plus two copper atoms. Iron three plus two iron two plus, and oxygen atoms to oxide. So you can see this is oxidation. This is a reduction. Okay, iron three plus to two plus is reduction, and oxygen atom to oxide is also reduction. So only A is oxidation. Okay, so you see that only A is oxidation. Okay, next question. Which element is the in the reaction below is oxidized? Which element in the reaction below is oxidized? Iron sulfate with chlorine giving sulfuric acid. Iron sulfate plus chlorine plus sulfuric acid giving so it's plus two plus three yeah and hydrogen is the same chlorine is getting reduced so yeah it's iron yes this is iron option c okay question number five what does an oxidizing agent do what does an oxidizing agent do it turns acidified potassium dichromate green now acidified potassium dichromate itself is an oxidizing agent so it won't react with an oxidizing agent, right? It turns acidified potassium manganate colorless. Now potassium manganate is also an oxidizing agent. You cannot have an oxidizing agent reacting with another oxidizing agent. An oxidizing agent requires a reducing agent, okay, to, rea to react with. It turns universal indicator red. Well, universal indicator will only give you the, you know, the pH with acid or alkali. D, it turns aqueous potassium iodide brown. Yes, potassium iodide is a reducing agent. So an oxidizing agent will react with a reducing agent, okay? Let's move on. In which of the following changes is the nitrogen reduced? Okay, is the nitrogen reduced to, okay. In ammonia, what is the oxidation state of nitrogen in ammonia? We just did in a question. It's plus three. Okay, it's plus three. Nitrogen will be zero. Okay, so plus three. And this is minus two, minus six, minus six plus five minus two plus two so okay tell me the answer c c c no is the nitrogen reduced is the nitrogen reduced yes yes hania it's a yes ajwa it's a right because look at this yes from plus three to plus two minus two and plus two here nitrogen is plus three here it's plus five 
okay this is plus 5 why i just calculated minus 6 and this should have plus 5 0 and this is plus 3 okay minus 3 to 0 okay uh, you want to do more questions or is that it do you want more questions or is that it yeah okay <laughs> Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, okay. Let's see. Okay, in which oxide does X have the same oxidation state as in the chloride? As in the chloride. Now, in the chloride, X has an oxidation state of plus three. It has an oxidation state of plus three. So, where else? Dekke bata do. Dekke bata do. You know, like the moment you see the option, the answer should come to you it is d good job myra good job yes ajwa hania d ariba d yes okay i think you know people who want to leave uh will you know won't like it so let's just stop it here okay i have a lot of questions but then you know we won't be able to do all of them here so okay jazakallah khairan and tomorrow inshallah we will do biology Okay, biology, um, we will continue with that transport in animals. And I think it's the function of liver, no, function of blood as a transport or the lymphatic. Basically, we will finish that chapter. Okay, whatever is left, I think it's the lymphatic tissue. Yeah, the lymphatic circulation. So inshallah, we will uh, do that part tomorrow in biology. Okay, and then in chemistry, in chemistry, uh, we will start the new chapter of quantitative analysis, which will be after we finish biology. Okay? Barakallah fee. Uh, no, I, I, I don't want to take any math. I, I, I don't want to take any math or history. No, I am, I don't know any history. Yeah, I, I will stick to, I will stick to this biology, chemistry, physics. I, I enjoy these subjects more. So, okay. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You guys have music, you know, in your background. Okay. Jazakallah khairan, Jazakallah khairan, and Barakallah fi. Allah Taala apke is ilm ko sab ke liye na nafe banaye. Amin. Tum amin. Hozema, please just stop this. Okay, stop unnecessary comments. Okay. <laughs> okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.